let me welcome you to the 31st lecture of uh, drilling and blasting technology course. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will discuss the techniques of uh, underground blasting, this will be the first lecture. Uh, we will discuss few underground blast design cut here and we will continue uh, the same lecture in the next class also. But uh, like every class what we do, we let us retrospect our previous lectures. So far, uh, we have covered the information about the surface blasting and surface blast design parameters and I believe that you can feel yourself confident that you can carry out a surface blast design. We have understood that the surface blast would be designed through trial blasting. That means, we know exact blast pattern for that unknown rock mass is not possible. We have to carry out a number of trial blast prior to arrive at the decision what should be the suitable design for carrying out blasting in that particular surface blasting condition. And we have also discussed the different procedural steps to be covered in the surface blast designing. In fact, the procedure is more or less similar for the underground blasting also, but we will discuss how we will start in this in this uh, two uh, consecutive two classes. And so, our uh, learning objective for this class and next class is that to understand the objective of underground blasting and to design an underground blast. So, for this coming two lecture, our, uh, underst our objective is to design the underground blast and for that we should understand what is underground blasting. So, let us start with this uh, video where we will get some knowledge about the underground blasting if we see this video. So, this is one underground you can say opening or tunnel or drift whatever that. Now, you can see the surface connection of the holes are now carried out. Then the delay provided in the inside the hole is blasted. You can see the fumes of the explosive now coming out from the uh, uh, tunnel. And you can see the first the surface or the uh, outside hole the connection is uh, carried out and after the blasting of that connections inside the delay which is provided inside the hole that is blasted a little bit time lag. So, that is the objective of this blast and you can understand that this is this blasting is almost very difficult to videograph because of the generation of the fumes in that blind heading. Let us now understand why we carry out the blasting in underground developmental drifts or underground openings. Our first objective is to fragment. Why this fragmentation require? Because we want to excavate that area, that area is filled with the rock mass. So, we want to fragment that rock mass into a number of small pieces. So, basically by carrying out this blasting, we are basically fragmenting the rock into a number of smaller pieces. So, that our equipment or the loading machine can handle those smaller pieces and that can be removed to create an opening. So, our objective is that we will drill the hole insert the explosive in, uh, in, inside the hole and then we blast that explosive to fragment the rock. So, first objective is basically the fragmentation. The next objective is the ore or waste excavation. So, fragmentation may be carried out in a rock where we need to create the opening, we need to create the opening or we need to go for excavation for extracting or removing the ore which can be processed or to create an opening. So, that in future time we can extract the ore or remove the ore for that the excavation is carried out in the waste. So, basically we carry out this ore or waste excavation in search of in search of mining. So, this is carried out opening for any other purposes, maybe the access or tunnels 
or may be storage whichever the condition it is, but these are for other purposes and these are for the mining purposes. So, that is why these are the two main excavations carried out and this is for the civil structures where the excavation is carried out large underground openings are carried out like theatres, underground ice hockey stadium all those large openings are created for the different civil purposes. So, these are the different objectives of creating the underground openings and for that the underground blastings are required because those are carried out in the strong or very very strong rocks. So, like the surface blasting the present scenario is that we are having a rock and we are having explosive and as we have discussed already this rock is uncontrolled we cannot alter this rock because the rock is there inside that area we cannot change it. Uh, this is the explosive sometimes we are ha having the option to change it, but often we do not have the option to change it because there are it is it may be already procured it the decision may be taken by the higher management or often that other types of explosive are not available like in India we are only having that ammonium nitrate based explosive. So, like that way we are having some partially control on the explosive we do not have any control on the rock, but we have to achieve our desired result that means we have to fragment the rock and with the desired length of advancement that means if this is the underground opening and we would like to excavate this part by drilling these are the drilled holes then we expect that at least up to this length to be excavated or to be fragmented into the smaller rock masses rock pieces and this fragmentation is essentially required and up to this length the advancement or pool is also required. So, this is another objective that has to be fulfilled. So, one is the fragmentation that is the size of smaller rock pieces and second one is the advancement that is the up to what depth up to what depth the opening is advanced by one round of blasting these two objectives are, are must be fulfilled in this condition. So, in an elaborated way you can see this is the opening prior to blasting before blast. So, this is before blast and this is after blast. And before blast you can see this is the drilling length you have carried out this much of drilling and after blasting you can see you have achieved say if this is the previously uh, previously this part this is the position and that means we have achieved an advancement this is the advancement or in other terms you can call it pool if it is a coal mining case up to which the rock is fragmented into the smaller pieces. So, in this case we are achieving an advance of this much and this portion of hole remain there as a hole mark which is called socket. So, uh, very often the whole total hole length is not utilized in this case and a part of hole length is utilized that means the advance achieved and the drilled hole length drilled hole length is having a ratio which is called hole utilization factor 
whole utilization factor. So, in this whole utilization factor we achieve up to a percentage of uh, whole length that much advance is achieved. It may be considered very good if we are achieving 90 percent, but depending on rock mass condition for very weak rock or if the joint sets are like in very favorable condition in the, those cases we can achieve 100 percent, 100 percent whole utilization often it may be greater than 100 percent also, but in more or less we consider 90 percent is very very good uh, performance of a of an underground blast less than that may be often accepted for the difficult blasting condition also. So, our objective of fragmentation objective of fragmentation and objective of whole utilization factor or advance is very very important. Uh, now, let us understand the terminology for a particular case if you are looking into the photograph you can see this is the opening you can see this is the opening this is the opening this side it is uh, not uh, visible. So, this side you can see this is the opening and if you are considering this is the total periphery area this is the total periphery area which is supposed to be excavated supposed to be blasted. Then our procedure is that we create another free phase. Now, again let me discuss with you because it is already discussed that in surface blasting we are having two free phases we carry out drilling like this. So, the explosive placed here is having one free front in this direction and another free front in this direction. So, basically there are two free faces available for a surface blasting, but in underground blasting you can see this is the only this is the only free face available in the underground rock which is not available in case of uh, the second free face is not available in case of underground blasting. So, our first objective is our first objective is basically to generate another free phase and for that we carry out blasting in a part which is called cut area. So, the first area is called cut area which in general centrally located in this case this is the cut area in the placed in the central part of the opening. What is the objective of this cut area? the objective of, of this cut area is that we drill the hole in this position these are the different holes. So, that we can create an opening in this place first. So, if you look into the into this from the uh, section or from the plan view it may it may look like this. if these are the holes drilled initially then we try to we try to create an opening here. So, that so that the other holes drilled at this position may use this place as the second free face this place as the second free face other than this one as the free phase. So, our objective is to first create another free phase and for that centrally an opening centrally an opening is basically created in this part which can act as the free phase for the other holes. So, for that the area is considered that is called cut area. So, in cut area we drill the holes the first holes which are drilled and blasted are called cut holes. Then the other holes which are drilled and gradually uh, blasted till 
it is achieving a desired length of excavation is called cut spreader hole and it is expected in cut area the desired length of advance is achieved and then the other holes are placed so that that much advance can be kept consistent advance for the remaining of the face area. So, that is why this is the cut area and it is very very important and all the design factors for what we will discuss in this class and the next class are basically for designing the cut area only. The designing principle of the stopping holes which are basically for uh, the, uh, the holes which are basically used for uh, uh, increasing the opening area increasing the opening area surrounding this cut area so that it can reach up to the periphery. So, that those are called stopping holes. The periphery holes which are placed in the roof side is called roof contour holes, periphery holes which are placed on the wall side is called wall contour holes and which are placed in the uh, floor side it is called lifter holes so, or floor holes. So, basically this last row of holes which are placed in the periphery are designed so that additional excavation that means additional excavation should not be there we want to restrict the excavation up to this desired periphery only up to this desired periphery only. So, for that the controlling measure is carried out in this designing. So, basically this design part contour holes part and stopping holes part this design part is more or less same to the surface blasting to the surface blasting only the changes are there in surface blasting our holes are vertical here holes are horizontal. So, only this much changes are there from the surface blasting. So, the design consideration is more or less similar apart from that damage control techniques in the contour holes apart from that the design procedure is more or less similar for the stopping holes and the contour holes which are more or less similar for the surface blasting holes also. So, the design considerations are made only for the cut holes. So, that is the special characteristics in this uh, designing of the uh, underground blasting. So, now let us consider about the different uh, designing theorem. We are having one burn cut designing theorem in which the holes are drilled parallelly and all the holes are horizontal there is no angled holes and we have already discussed this case in case of our drilling considerations while, while we have carried out our drilling patterns for the underground mines that time we have already discussed how the burn cuts are there. So, the burn cut patterns are discussed there we will design uh, we will uh, understand the designing of this. If you look into this this burn cut you can see this is the cut area and the details of this cut design is this one which we will discuss how it will be there. Then these are the stopping holes these are the stopping holes this is the lifter hole or four floor control hole this is the wall contour hole and this is the roof contour hole which is basically controlling the damage to the periphery rock mass. So, our burn cut is specially for the horizontal drilling. If you look into the details of the burn cut you can see the burn cut this is basically four square burn cut. where uh, uh, you can see basically here it is 3 square, but uh, 4 square burn cut the you can see 1 square, 2 square, 3 square if it is required you can go for 4 square also. So, in this square in general we place an empty hole in the center which is surrounded by the explosive loaded holes empty holes then the explosive loaded holes and this empty hole is basically act as the free face for this loaded holes. So, if we are blasting this one first if we are blasting this one first then 
this act as the free phase and ultimately and free phase area is developed like this. Similarly, when this one is blasted a free phase area is developed like this. So, while this one is being blasted that time the total free phase length is this one to this one. So, this will be blasted considering this total area is the free phase area and gradually like this gradually the free phase area is becoming extended and it is finally, reached up to this the total free phase area is achieved and it is expected that the desired length of excavation will be completed at this place in this place also. So, this is the basic consideration of the uh, burn cut blush design. This is the wedge cut blush design where we consider the initial an angle is provided. So, that we there is no uh, uh, so that a, a particular rock resistance at this place may be reduced and uh, basically a crater blasting type blasting will occur and if the explosive is placed here this will try to excavate this portion of rocks and explosive placed at this position will try to excavate this position of rock. So, finally, by blasting this one and free phase may be created like this. So, by blasting this one a free phase may be created like this. So, for this hole this will act as the burden and a free phase like this will be observed after this blasting and finally, a free phase like this one will be observed. Basically, in our design consideration we have already discussed that fan cut drag cut is basically half wedge cut and pyramid cut is basically a double wedge cut. So, our design consideration will discuss uh, mainly for the wedge cut and for the uh, burn cut only we will discuss a very little of the fan cut and drag cut. So, let us see how it is how the fan cut is there you can see if the fan cut is basically half wedge cut where the wedge is, wedge is placed uh, horizontally. Uh, that means, if you look the previous one again you can see if you are if you are cutting this part it is more or less it is more or less becoming similar to the fan cut. It is becoming more or less similar to the fan cut and if you just uh, tilt it 90 degree so that the wedge angle becoming uh, creating an wedge with the horizontal creating an wedge with the horizontal then it can be uh, called as drag cut. So, basically this is uh, fan cut and drag cut these are two uh, half wedge cut where the wedge is uh, creating in drag cut with the vertical in fan cut in fan cut with the horizontal. So, this is the little bit uh, modification uh, in the wedge cut is made uh, considering the different rock mass condition and that is why basically we carry out our designing for the wedge cut and for the burn cut not for any other cut the procedure is more or less similar for the both the uh, for the other cases. Okay. So, let us start our designing the wedge cut which is our main objective for uh, this lecture next class we will discuss about the designing the burn cut. So, our design objective for an wedge cut is that first we have to decide the cut location then we have to compute the burden and spacing length of the holes explosive requirement and the delay assigning. So, first our requirement is assigning the location of the cut area. So, this is the location of the cut area and this may be at any place cut area may be at any place and where it has to be placed that is the first essential decision. 
in general the most common belief is that we have to place the cut centrally so that once it is carried out the for the rest of the places it can be used symmetrically for the other stopping holes. So, in general we place the cut centrally and uh, you understand while drilling cast uh, class we have discussed the main drawback of the wedge cut is that its length is basically dictated by the area or width of the opening. So, drilling length is basically dictated by this because the first angle is there which is basically restricting the drilling length. So, that is why in general we try to have an very very wider wedge we try to have an very very wider wedge cut in an effort in an effort to achieve the maximum length to be drilled. So, this is the cut area in general we try to achieve, but we can have the option we can have the option we can place our cut area may be at this position or may be at this position. So, the cut area may be varied at different position in vertical consideration ideally it should be in the central part or it may be in the lower part or it may be in the upper part. So, this type of variation is possible though we try to place it centrally and maximum width must be covered maximum width must be covered so that we can have the maximum length. But one consideration is very very important at this place in cut area you can understand we are having the charge concentration is very very high. So, that means if you are placing charge at this position is charge at this position charge concentration in this position is very very high which may damage which may damage the rock part below that level where it is not blasted. So, to avoid that situation generally in practical cases we try to little bit shift our cut area little bit lower part little bit upper part. So, that much shifting is carried out very frequently in hard rock mass blasting condition where wedge cut is utilized because the damaged rock mass it is very difficult to carry out drilling. So, cut location is decided basically considering all this, but ideally or theoretically it must be placed centrally. Now, let us see how we will calculate the burden and spacing. So, our let us consider it in step by step mode our first step is that we have to measure the dimension of the face. So, first consideration is that we have to measure the dimension of this because this width is basically dictating our wedge cut drilling length. Then step 2 is let us decide the diameter of the blast hole first basically these are the iteration. So, for this iteration initially we assume some diameter of the hole because the diameter of hole is basically guiding the linear charge concentration. linear charge concentration. So, basically this is dictating the linear charge concentration and that is why we decide the blast hole and most of the authors those who have uh, give the guideline of the designing uh, uh, the blast they basically starts they are they basically start their designing with the diameter of the hole. So, we first assume some diameter of the hole first then our next assumption is the decide to decide the internal angle of the hole to be placed. That means, the first angle the first angle in an wedge cut 
has to be provided that angle has to be decided. Basically the guideline is that if the rock is soft we will go for the increased ang angle internal angle internal angle increased internal angle if the rock is hard we have to decrease the internal angle, but in no case we should not go less than 58 degree or you can say it is 1 radian we should not go less than 1 radian of this value. This guideline is given by Langefors, Kirchstrom, Gustafsson etcetera though if you uh, see the uh, uh, DJ Deshmukh book you will find out this is given 45 degree as per the DJ Deshmukh book, but in practical cases we in general we follow this one especially in the hard rock blasting condition we must follow this 58 degree uh, considerations. Then we have to calculate the cut height in general this cut height is considered for 3 holes that means these are the 3 holes for which this blast is designed and this is the cut height. So, if this is the area of the opening this is the cut area it is expected the holes are like this and another holes are like this. So, that the cut area is basically two spacing two spacing these are the spacing and that is in general considered 46 into D as per Langefors Kirchstrom guideline. And after decision of the first internal angle in general we calculate the burden as per this B 1 is L cos theta B 2 is 34 degree 34 D is equal to B 3 and we accordingly we change the angle from 58 degree basically we go for 60 degree instead of 58 degree because it is easy to measure then they are to 72 degree 85 degree like that way depending on the rock strength considerations. So, basically these are the design guideline as per Langefors Kirchstrom we go for this is the stemming length T is equal to 12 into D which is considered and this is the spacing uh, for other holes uh, 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 stopping holes and contour holes in general we go for spacing is equal to 1.25 burden charge concentration is considered this one and drilling length restriction is considered as per these two condition you can see where W is basically giving us the guideline about the width of the width of the face. So, basically 2 into if you go for 2 into L cos theta So, this is L cos theta. So, this is 2 into L cos theta if there is some some gap then you have to add this one which is not added here. So, this is 2 into L cos theta L cos theta So, L cos theta if you are considering this half then the next burden then the next burden. So, this is B 1 B 2. So, L cos theta 34 D plus 34 D these are the two burden this multiplied by 2 is basically the total phase and this must be less than equal to total phase that is the restriction or this is the condition this is basically uh, consideration of this additional uh, additional this wedge part if the clearance is considered in this case. So, if these two conditions are not satisfied we have to change the drilling length we have to change the drilling dia and we have to go for the next iteration. So, basically 
we have to consider we have to consider this d we have to consider this l then we have to go for the design considerations and we have to check whether it is satisfied then we have to accept it go for the trial blasting otherwise we have to go for the next iteration for this blasting. So, let us consider one such design ex, uh, experiment in this case it is a 4 meter uh, tunnel width for which it is considered and you can see this is the first L cos theta is coming 0.7 meter then the 36 uh, 34 D is coming 0.4 meter 0.4 meter this is the two spacing is coming 1.5 meter that is 46 D and considering this this is the total uh, phase design. And you can see this is the first consideration is the uh, 60 degree, 60 degree, second consideration 75 degree, next the third one is 90 degree. So, this is the consideration in very hard rock condition we have n number of modifications are there, we go for the stab holes here, we can have more angle drilling in between. So, all those are considered while we are carrying out the trial blasting in actual field based on that the design modification has to be created. Uh, you can uh, go for more reading uh, for wedge cut uh, blast design pattern specially this two book is very very important. This two book is very very important for the wedge cut blast design in specially for the hard rock condition. In soft rock condition 60 degree is not at all required you can go with the 72 degree or 75 degree like coal etcetera that gives us little bit easy. Uh, in Gimeno book also a good representation of this Gustafsson and Langefors Kilstrom criteria is also available. Basically wedge cut is very very popular because the explosive requirement is less in wedge cut uh, uh, as compared to the burn cut. Uh, we will continue with the burn cut in the next class. Thank you.